Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we're doing a deep dive into this new document related to Rex Hureman, the alleged Long Island serial killer. Rex Hureman, I'm an architect, I'm an architectural consultant, I'm a troubleshooter, born and raised on Long Island. Okay. Been working in Manhattan since 1987. And it's actually a cabinet maker's hammer. The work is not done here. But this is a major, major step forward. My reaction is, uh, this is nuts. It's really, really crazy. You never know, you know, you, you never know who your neighbors are, right? He was arrested on July 13th of 2023. He was initially charged with three murders out of the Gilgo four murders, but could be suspected of many more. And yesterday on January 16th of 2024, we actually watched a press conference live together. So if you missed that, it was a huge announcement in this case, major development where Rex Human was charged with a fourth murder. So he's now officially been charged with all of the Gilgo four murders, which were the first four bodies to be discovered on Gilgo Beach in Long Island in New York. And that was in 2010. So just think about that. Think about how long it actually took and there's a whole story of why and what happened and everything. But when a new task force was formed in 2022, they found this guy, they zoned in on him within about a month. Now, I'm gonna say this document is 56 pages long. Thank you to MB Inc. for sending me this document. The thing is that Exhibit A, is part of this document. We here at Grizzly to Crime have already read through Exhibit A before extensively, slowly, go check it out. I will link that for you. That would be known as the probable cause affidavit. It was also called a bail application and that was very detailed on how they conducted the investigation and why they believed that Rex Hureman was responsible for four of the murders, but they said three and then the prime suspect in the murder of Maureen Brainard Barnes. So now they've obviously updated that document with this latest one, which is on top of the one we've already read. So I'm gonna read you the latest information. If you want a deep dive into the previous information, go to the playlist or go to that specific video, which is linked in the description box for you. Also, if you've never heard of this case before, I would highly recommend checking out the playlist, which is in chronological order for you, because we've done a deep dive on this case since the new task force was formed and followed it all the way until they arrested the suspect. And since then, we've watched every press conference together. We've read every document together that we possibly can. And we will be keeping a very close eye on this case. If that's something you want to follow, make sure that you are subscribed. Uh, your notifications are set to all so you don't miss out, you don't get notified of what I'm actually talking about on a, any given day because I make a lot of videos. We go live a lot. I make YouTube shorts. I'm always updating you on the community tab. There's always a lot going on. As you know, I do this full time with my whole heart for you. And I really like to read you these documents to supplement what they say, for example, at the press conference, because a lot of what was said there, I don't know about you, but it went like right over my head because I'm like, what? There's so much DNA information. Then I'm like, I need to see that on paper. This document is us seeing it on paper, which is brilliant. So I'm going to be reading through this, okay, with you. And then I will also link the previous PCA, which I would recommend watching if you've never heard of it before, in case you have questions of, well, how did they ever figure out that Rex Human is the suspect? Okay, so let's dive into this. This is, of course, the people of the state of New York against Rex A. Hureman, bail application indictment number 7012624. Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like, and share. On 
On or about July 14th of 2023, defendant Rex A. Heuerman was charged by a grand jury with the following six counts, which had been incorporated in Suffolk County Indictment 7188923. Murder in the first degree in violation of New York State Penal Law Section uh, Class A1 felony for the death of Melissa Bartholomew on or about July 10th of 2009. Murder in the first degree for Megan Waterman. Murder in the first degree for Amber Costello. Then murder in the second degree for Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. Today, defendant Rex A. Human stands before this court charged by the grand jury in a superseding indictment which incorporates not only the above counts, but the additional charge of murder in the second degree in violation of the New York State Penal Law Section 125.25.1, a Class A1 uh, violent felony for the death of Maureen Brainard Barnes, on or about July 9th of 2007. Maureen Brainard Barnes was actually the first of the Gilgo Four victims, the first to go missing, and yet it's taken the longest to be able to charge Rex Hureman with her murder. So as much as, you know, this is devastating, we were all very happy for her family at this press conference because they finally have some answers. They finally have a suspect and... They believe that Rex Hureman is responsible for her murder. The people filed a written bail application at Rex A. Hureman's initial arraignment, which occurred on July 14th of 2023. That application is annexed here to as Exhibit A. On July 14th of 2023, the Honorable Richard Ambro ordered that defendant Rex A. Hureman be remanded without bail. The matter was subsequently adjourned to August 1st of 2023 before the Honorable Timothy P. Metze. On August 1st of 2023 and in the ensuing appearances that have followed, this court has continued to remind the defendant without bail. Set forth is the people's bail application in support of the superseding indictment, which will expand on additional evidentiary developments in this investigation, not included within Exhibit A, further tying defendant Hureman to the murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, Amber Costello, and now Maureen Brainard Barnes. Based on defendant Human's indictment on an additional murder charge as it pertains to now a fourth victim, the serious nature of these serial murders, the planning and forethought that went into these crimes, the strength of the people's case, the length of incarceration the defendant faces upon conviction, the extended period of time that this defendant was able to avoid apprehension, and the remaining facts set forth herein and contained within Exhibit A, the people remain steadfast that the only means to ensure defendant Rex A. Human's return to court is to remind him without bail. Records now establish that defendant Human's wife was also out of New York for the disappearance of Maureen Brainard Barnes because they already had shown in the proper cause affidavit that she was out of town at the time when the other three victims of the Gilgo Four were murdered. So they say, as set forth in Exhibit A, travel and cellular telephone billing records had previously established that defendant Hureman's wife and children were out of state during the disappearances and murders of three of the four victims, specifically Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. Recently, during the execution of numerous search warrants following defendant Hureman's arrest, law enforcement secured thousands of documents from storage units leased by defendant Hureman. I think there's more than documents that was in those storerooms based on medical examiners being there, but we're yet to find out when it gets to trial what on earth they found in those storerooms. While the review of these records is ongoing, among these records is an August 2007 Bank of America credit card statement, see embedded image on following page, which indicates a July 6, 2007 check-in to the flagship hotel located in Atlantic City, as well as transactions which are indicative of a stay in Atlantic City from July 6, 2007 through July 20, 2007. Now, many locals have pointed out that that's not too far away from home. It's about, I looked on the map, about a three and a half hour drive or so. So many people are saying that's not really out of town, but it kind of is. But I see your point, you know, that it's like, whoa, it's not exactly like going to Iceland because other trips apparently were to Iceland, which is allegedly where Asa Elarup is from. But this was um, a little bit closer to home. In my opinion, it's still far enough for a trip and especially where they booked into but let's see what else unfolds in the case. So I'm going to read the footnotes for you as well, where they say the highlighted boxes have been added to the bank statement below for demonstration purposes. 
red indicating a credit card charge for a stay at the flagship hotel beginning on July 6, 2007, and blue indicating a credit card charge for a stay at Club Wyndham Skyline Tower beginning on July 13, 2007. When seized by law enforcement, the document below contained the handwriting depicted in the bank statement below. Okay, so we can see the exhibit here and the boxes that they've highlighted, flagship hotel with the dates that they've just mentioned. Based on post-arrest interviews with witnesses, including defendant Herman's wife, Ms. Asa Ellerup, the task force was able to corroborate that Ms. Ellerup and her two children stayed in Atlantic City, New Jersey from on or about July 6th, 2007 through on or about July 20th, 2007. The trip began with defendant Herman remaining in New York. According to the investigation to date, Ms. Ellerup and her children checked into the flagship hotel on or about July 6th, 2007. On or about July 13th, 2007, Defendant Hureman arrived in Atlantic City. On that date, Defendant Hureman and his family checked into the Club Wyndham Skyline Tower in Atlantic City, New Jersey, as seen above. Consequently, Defendant Hureman's wife and children were indeed traveling out of state during the time of Maureen Brainard Barnes' disappearance, which occurred on or about July 9th of 2007. Based on the foregoing, the murders of all four victims occurred at times when Defendant Hureman's wife and children were traveling out of state which allowed Defendant Hureman unfettered time to execute his plans for each victim without any fear that his family would uncover or learn of his involvement in these crimes. Additional burner phones and online account activity linked to Defendant Hureman. As described in Exhibit A, over the course of the investigation of Defendant Hureman, investigators located a number of online accounts and burner cell phones linked to Defendant Hureman, which were held by Defendant in fictitious names and used for illicit activities. Two of those phones were recovered from Defendant Hureman at the time of his arrest, specifically 347-885-1697, which was recovered from Defendant Hureman's office in Midtown Manhattan, and 347-304-2671, which was recovered from Defendant Hureman's person. Both phones have clear ties to Defendant Hureman, also set forth within Exhibit A, who utilized these phones in furtherance of hundreds of contacts with sex workers between 2020 and 2023. For example, an extraction of that number, which is an Alcatel flip phone recovered from Defendant Hureman's work desk drawer, revealed the following communication. Now, of course, we know we're talking about an alleged serial killer, so we know that this does come with a trigger warning, but I'm just putting it out there again, trigger warning, because they're going to be showing us some pictures, and we're going to go through some Google searches as well, which I'm not going to read them all aloud because they're pretty bad, but I'm going to pause so that you can read them as well, and I'll just discuss a few points, just so that you're prepared. Okay, so we continue. They say, for this flip phone, right, on or about March 1st of 2020, starting at approximately 4.39 p.m., the following text message exchange occurred between his number and a 516 phone number, hearing after sex worker phone number one, which is linked to a sex advertisement in the Massapequa Park area. See embedded image below. The footnote says the district attorney's office is aware of the full 10-digit phone number for sex worker phone 1. The full number is redacted to maintain the privacy of the current possessor of said phone. So here is the advert that I think he had responded to when it says MIA, all new, big booty, BDSM, all fetishes welcomed, hashtag Massapequa. And so they say at approximately 4.39 p.m., um, at this this number, which is belonging to Rex Hureman, according to what they're saying, sent the following text message to sex worker phone number one, stating, Hi, I saw your ad and wanted to see if we could set something up later. Andy. Of course, his name's not Andy, but he used lots of fake names, as they've just told us. At approximately 5.09 p.m., sex worker phone one responded to the number, uh, to the text saying, I'm done for the day. So I guess I'm done for the day. Does tomorrow work? At approximately 5.12 p.m., he responded by stating, I am working all day. I was free today. My wife is out for the day, working Monday. Soon thereafter, sex worker phone number one responded to the text by stating, Okay, love, I'm available Monday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., Tuesday, 10 to 7.30, Thursday, 10 to 7.30, Friday, 11.30 to 7.30. At approximately 5.19 p.m., uh, Rex Hureman, that's what the number belongs to, right? Has sent the following text message to sex worker phone one stating, Thanks, I will see which day I can make work. On or about March 4th of 2020, at approximately 7.49 p.m., his number sent the following text message to sex worker number one stating, Andy here, email me at sandbagger303, sandbagger, okay, 303 at gmail.com. We can talk bed info. 
Google records obtained via subpoena for the sandbagger303gmail.com account hearing after the sandbagger email account revealed that the account was created in 2017 and was subscribed in the fictitious name of Andrew Roberts, a known alias utilized by defendant Rex A. Andrew Hureman. Huh? Middle name Andrew? Yes. I remember now. <laughs> a search warrant revealed that the sandbagger email account was utilized as recently as April 2021 to access and or conduct searches related to the P-O-R-N, to R-A-P-E, torture, and sex workers several thousand times. Thereafter, in April 2021, defendant Hureman is believed to have transitioned such activity to the T-Hawk email account, described in further detail as set forth in Exhibit A. For example, these newly discovered searches include, but are not limited to, which, as I say, um, trigger warning, okay, I know we're all adults here, but some of these are really messed up. So, I mean, just... I highlighted one here for you. You can just read through all of them yourself. It's all bullet points you see there. But you see the third bullet point? Autopsy photos of female. Um, yeah, I don't even know what color to call that flag. Red flag, but like the reddest flag. Autopsy photos of female. That's what he's Googling. That's what he's into. Well, it makes sense because he's an alleged serial killer. But still, look at that. Look at the sadism in these searches. And I've also highlighted chubby and skinny because he looks at both contrasts. And I don't think it's really about one or the other. He does seem to like the extremes, but it's about sadism and control, of course, and torture, which is really scary. Um, this one I highlighted, it says TS Escorts Manhattan, which would be Transsexual Escorts Manhattan. And that's important because of the unidentified Asian Doe who was dressed in woman's clothing, which could very likely later be linked to Rex Hureman. So as you can see, he also searched Asian Escorts Manhattan. And then also the one I highlighted at the bottom there, the BBW, just in case someone doesn't know, is for Big Beautiful Woman. Footnote says, unless otherwise notated, these searches are listed as they appeared in the Google records. In addition, Defendant Human used the Sandbag email account as recently as July 2021 to access and conduct dozens of searches into the Gilgo Beach homicide investigation. These searches or articles accessed include, but are not limited to, how cell phone tracking is increasingly being used to solve crimes, FBI cellular analysis survey team, Gilgo News, how does cell site analysis work, historical cell site analysis, overview of principles and survey, new discovery series tackles decade-old Long Island serial killer murders, Melissa Bartholomew's sister, inside the mind of a murderer, new clues in the hunt for the Long Island serial killer, Long Island serial killer victim sister reveals more about Maureen Brainard Barnes's mysterious disappearance. Investigators use DNA, genetic genealogy, to ID another victim in Gilgo Beach serial murders. Further digital evidence linked to Defendant Hureman says, Recently, during the execution of numerous search warrants following Defendant Hureman's arrest, law enforcement seized hundreds of electronic devices from the defendant's home and place of business. While the review of these records is ongoing, the data indicates the defendant Rex A. Human utilized many of these electronic devices in a similar fashion. Example, Google searches regarding the deceased victims and their family members. Google searches regarding the status of the instant investigation. Google searches for software that would assist in wiping or erasing data from computers and other similar digital devices. Purchase or use of easy hide IP shredder.exe and other digital masking or forensic wiping tools. Four, unless otherwise notated, these searches or article descriptions are listed as they appeared in the Google records. That's what the footnote says, right? So to continue on with the list, we were just reading, they say, Google searches on serial killers and serial killer investigations. Defendants' devices also contain the following. A collection of violent bondage and torture, P-O-R-N, preceding, during, and subsequent to the disappearances and murders of the aforementioned victims between 2007 and 2010. Now, is it just me, or do you also wonder, what the heck was he up to between 2010 and 2023? Because it can't just be, in my mind, that this alleged serial killer did all these things, already charged with four murders, I know he's innocent to proven guilty, but you know what I mean, what he's been charged with, allegedly what he did, and that it, what, he just stopped in 2010? I don't think so. I think this, this case is so much bigger than maybe anyone will ever know, which is actually pretty common with serial killers like Ted Bundy. They don't ever know the exact number of how many victims he really had. And as I said in my live stream yesterday, which you could check out if you click the link in the description box if you missed it, 
many of these serial killers want to keep some form of control and of course they want to you know keep their trophies especially if they could only have mental trophies once they are in jail or uh, convicted and in prison so they might never actually just confess and and tell everything so people will just never know which is pretty scary and very sad they also say uh, prostitution related searches preceding during and subsequent to the disappearances and murders of the aforementioned victims between 2007 and 2010 example back page and craigslist etc Notably, an analysis of defendant Herman's laptop computer indicates the use of a file shredding software on July 9th of 2009, shortly before defendant Herman was to meet Melissa Bartholomew. Investigators believe this was an attempt to shred any digital evidence of the laptop computer being utilized to search for Melissa Bartholomew's prostitution advertisement. Moreover, an analysis of defendant Herman's laptop computer reveals that on September 1st of 2010, at approximately 9.03 p.m., defendant Rex A. Herman accessed Amber Costello's back page ad, just hours before the ruse occurred as described within Exhibit A. Approximately two hours later at 11, approximately 11.33 p.m. and 11.34 p.m., a burner phone linked to defendant Herman had communications with Amber Costello's phone. During those communications, the burner phone connected to cell site towers in West Amityville and Massapequa Park. Thereafter, the burner cell phone indicates travel to West Babylon in proximity to the residence of Amber Costello and again had contact with Ms. Costello's phone at approximately 12.05 a.m. on September 2nd of 2010, which is when witnesses describe an individual, now known to be defendant Rex A. Human, arriving at the Costello residence. The task force's discovery of a direct link between Rex A. Herman and Ms. Costello's back page ad just hours before defendant Herman met with Ms. Costello further solidifies that defendant Herman was the John who was the subject of the ruse on September 2nd of 2010 and therefore was the same John who returned later that day to pick up Ms. Costello prior to her disappearance and murder. Despite defendant Herman's attempts to wipe or scrub his laptop computer, he was unsuccessful in concealing his access to Ms. Costello's back page ad. Recent DNA analysis of hairs recovered from the examination of the victim's bodies. So yesterday, District Attorney Ray Tierney, who had his press conference on Instagram, remember that? <laughs> he went over a lot of this DNA information, but, you know, it was so much that I knew, okay, at the time, let's not even try to summarize what he's saying because we're going to read through this document. And thankfully, yeah, this document is very detailed, so let's go through that part now. As set forth in Exhibit A, the Suffolk County Crime Lab, herein after SCCL, and two outside forensic laboratories previously referred to as Forensic Laboratory No. 1 and Forensic Laboratory No. 2, conducted testing of hairs recovered on various victims, specifically comparing the DNA profiles generated from these hairs recovered at the crime scenes to DNA profiles developed from defendant human and members of his immediate family. On or about July 14th of 2023, which is the day after Rex Human was arrested, this was the day he was arraigned, right? Members of the task force met with defendant Human's wife, Asa Ellerup, as well as his daughter, Victoria Human, and stepson, Christopher Sheridan, and obtained buckle swabs on consent from each of the three individuals. The task force transported these swabs to the SCCL and requested that said items be tested against the DNA profiles developed from 11 bottles, previously collected from garbage cans placed in front of defendant Herman's residence on July 21st of 2022, as well as a 12th item, a monster Java can described infra so they're going to show us that in a moment the footnote says three of the four victims were restrained by burlap and tape melissa Bartholomew, megan waterman and amber costello while the fourth victim maureen brainard barnes was restrained by three belts the pertinent hairs were recovered from the restraints of three of the four victims as set forth in exhibit a the sccl swabbed the mouth of said bottles and of the 11 bottles collected outside the human residence, the SCCL was able to develop three autosomal DNA profiles ultimately labeled unknown individual A, a male later determined to be the stepson of Rex A. Human. Now, they say A, Monster Java can recovered from Victoria Human. On May 25th of 2023, undercover agents of the task force conducted physical surveillance of Victoria Human the then 26-year-old daughter of defendant Herman. 
During said surveillance, said agents observed Victoria Human board a Long Island Railroad train hearing after LIRR at Penn Station, which was headed eastbound towards Massapequa Park. The undercover agents then boarded the train and observed Victoria Hureman drinking from a gold-colored Monster Java can. See embedded and redacted image below. Wow, <laughs> to know the undercover agents were there watching, waiting for that can to be chucked in the trash so that they could test her DNA. Very interesting. So this footnote continues from the one above where they said, Rex A. Hureman, and they said, unknown individual B, a female later determined to be Asa Ellerup, the wife of Rex A. Hureman, and unknown individual C, a male later determined to be Rex A. Hureman. So then they say, once the LIRR train arrived at the Massapequa Park station, undercover law enforcement observed Victoria Hureman exit the train, discard the can in a trash bin, and walk away from the station. The undercover agents of the task force then secured the gold-colored Monster Java can from the trash receptacle depicted below, and the can was then subsequently transported to the SCCL for further analysis. And there it is. So we've seen pizza crust, napkins, and now we've seen a monster java can as well in this investigation. They say BSCCL analysis of aforementioned items following defendant human's arrest. Subsequent to defendant Rex A. Human's arrest, the SCCL has been able to inter alia come to the following conclusions. A female DNA profile was developed from the buckle swab of Victoria Hureman, which matched the DNA profile obtained from the Monster Java can. Then, point number two, a female DNA profile was developed from the buckle swab of Asa Ellerup, which matched the DNA profiles obtained from two of the 11 bottle cans recovered from in front of the Hureman residence on July 21st of 2022, which had previously been attributed to unknown individual B. DNA samples of the Monster Java can and the buckle swabs from Victoria Hureman and Asa Ellerup were sent to Forensic Lab 1 and Forensic Lab 2 for DNA profiling and further comparison. C. Determinations made by Forensic Lab 1 following defendant Hureman's arrest. Forensic Lab 1 was founded by paleogeneticists to apply DNA techniques and direct genome sequencing used in molecular paleontology to difficult to solve forensic casework and the identification of human remains. Forensic lab number one's propriety methods make it possible to recover genetic profiles from rootless hair and other highly degraded samples that otherwise fail traditional forensic DNA testing, including the aforementioned DNA analysis performed at the SCCL. Recently, Forensic Lab 1 issued reports which contain the following conclusions. So here they say female hair on Maureen Brainard Barnes. That's the latest charge that Rex Hureman just got for the murder of Maureen Brainard Barnes, the first to go missing of the Gilgo Four victims. Miss Brainard Barnes had been left restrained by three leather belts, one of which was utilized to tie Barnes's feet or ankles or legs together. During the examination of the belts, the SCCL recovered a human hair from the buckle of said belt, hearing after female hair on Barnes. On or about December 18th of 2010, the SCCL was able to determine that it corresponded to a Caucasian head hair fragment. Although this hair was found unsuitable for nuclear DNA profiling at that time, it was subsequently sent to Forensic Lab 1 for further DNA analysis prior to the identification of Rex Hureman as a suspect. Recently, Forensic Lab number 1 was able to generate DNA sequencing data for the female hair on Barnes. Forensic lab number one was then able to conduct a one-to-one -one autosomal nuclear DNA comparison between said profile developed from the female hair on Barnes to Asa Ellerup's SNP genotype file, which resulted in the following conclusion. The DNA profile generated from the female hair on Barnes, which was recovered from a belt buckle utilized to restrain Ms. Brainard Barnes's remains, is 7.9 trillion times more likely to have come from a person genetically identical to Asa Ellerup's SNP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. See embedded excerpt of report below. So this is very detailed, as we can see, where they say Suffolk County Crime Lab, small yellow envelope containing sample sealed with evidence tape, Wow, but to think that this dates all the way back to 2010 when they found the remains and that technology improved over time as well and they found a suspect that they'd already zoned in on in 2022. That's pretty amazing. Okay, 
So you can pause if you want to just uh, read this. I'm going to continue on with the text here, where they say two female hairs on Megan Waterman. Megan Waterman had been bound by duct tape. During the course of the examination of Miss Waterman's body, two female human hairs were recovered. One from outside the head area and the other from the tape of the head area. Both hairs were recovered in the vicinity of Miss Waterman's head, hearing after two female hairs on Waterman. Examination by the SCCL indicated that the two female hairs on Waterman exhibited Caucasian or European characteristics, but were unsuitable for further DNA testing at that time. The two female hairs on Waterman were subsequently submitted to Forensic Lab No. 1, prior to the identification of Rex Heuermann as a suspect for further DNA analysis. Recently, Forensic Lab No. 1 was able to generate DNA sequencing data for the two female hairs on Waterman and subsequently conducted a one-to-one -one autosomal nuclear DNA comparison between said profiles developed from the two female hairs on Waterman to Asa Elarup's SNP genotype file, which resulted in the following conclusions. First, With regards to the hair recovered from outside the head area of Miss Waterman, the DNA profile generated of said hair is 2.374 times 10 to the power 48, more likely to have come from a person genetically identical to Asa Elarup's SNP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. And then look at the numbers in this footnote. The 2.374 times 10 to the power 48 statistic and the following statistical probabilities are provided in scientific notation. For illustration purposes, the standard notation is what we just read, with 48 zeros thereafter. Look at that number. Yeah, I think it's pretty much Asa Elarab's DNA, right? Ooh, whoa. So in other words, with regards to the hair recovered from outside of the head area of Miss Waterman, the DNA profile generated from said hair is that much more likely to have come from a person genetically identical to Asa Elarab's SNP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. Second, with regards to the hair recovered from the tape of the head area of Miss Waterman, the DNA profile generated of, uh, from said hair is 2.778 times 10 to the power of 480, more likely to have come from a person genetically identical to Asa Elarab's SNP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. Again, you can pause to read, especially if you're a replay watcher. If you're watching the premiere, I'm not sure if you can pause. Maybe. I think you could. But pause to read or take a screenshot if you want to look at this uh, closely. I will also put the document, as I always do, on Patreon along with my post. Normally, I'm posting pictures of the cats or, you know, whatever it is. And then I also attach documents in cases that I am currently covering. So here, um, point number three says, uh, female hair on Amber Costello. An examination of the body of Amber Costello revealed that she appeared to have been bound by burlap, as well as numerous pieces of duct tape. During the course of the examination of Miss Costello's body, a female human hair was recovered specifically on a piece of tape from the burlap wrapping in the vicinity of Miss Costello's head, herein after female hair on Costello. A subsequent examination of the female hair on Costello led to the determination that it had Caucasian or European characteristics. However, It was unsuitable for further DNA testing at that time by the SCCL. Prior to the identification of Rex Heuermann as a suspect, the female hair on Costello was subsequently submitted to Forensic Lab No. 1 for further DNA analysis. Recently, Forensic Lab 1 was able to generate DNA sequencing data for the female hair on Costello and subsequently conducted a one-to-one -one autosomal nuclear DNA comparison between said profile, developed from the female hair on Costello, to Victoria Heuermann's SNP, that's Rex Heuermann's daughter's, right, genotype file, developed from the Monster Java can, which had been discarded by Victoria Heuermann on May 25th of 2023, which resulted in the following conclusion. Prepare for big numbers again. <laughs> the DNA profile generated from the female hair on Costello is 4.654 times 10 to the power of 63, more likely to have come from a person genetically identical to Victoria Heuermann's SMP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. Now, I've noticed from the live stream chats that when people hear about this, then they immediately generally jump to the conclusion that Asa must be involved, and now people are saying, what if the daughter is also involved? I think that Victoria was 13 at the time of these murders, between the age of uh, 9 and 13 or so, so I don't think she was involved. But here is another thought. Think about this based on the Google searches you saw. And think about them saying that they were out of town at the time. What if Rex Heuermann, 
who is the person who we should be focusing on, who is the suspect who's been charged, right? What if he is so sick and sadistic that he actually did these things to these victims either in his wife's room or in his and or in his daughter's room, which is why the hair may have come from their pillow, you know, and then ended up on the victim's hair. How do we know? Because to me, that would be quite plausible. I mean, that would be a whole combination of fantasies for him, in my opinion, if I had to speculate that way. So don't you think that that's a scary thought? Because how do we can't assume that they stayed in the same rooms. Not every mar married couple sleeps in the same bed in the same room. Maybe they had separate rooms. Or maybe Rex Uriman took the victims to his own room when his wife wasn't there. And did all the things to the victims that he wished he could have done to his wife, which obviously he can't because, yeah, they end up not alive. This is how far it seems like this guy went and his Google searches are very sadistic and horrendous. So that's what I'm thinking about how the Harris could have ended up on. Now, that's two victims I've already mentioned where there was a female hair around the victim's head area. Okay, so... Again, I think I've paused actually for long enough or talked here for you to be able to just uh, read this here, which is a table confirming those results. So they say, notably at the time of Miss Amber Costello's disappearance and murder, Victoria Human would have been almost one month shy, there we go, of her 14th birthday. Thank you, footnotes, for confirming what I just said. <laughs> Based on the foregoing, it is significant that two forensic labs, okay, forensic lab one and forensic lab two, have now independently determined that the female hairs recovered on the remains of Miss Waterman and Miss Costello are substantially more likely to have derived from a person genetically identical to the SNP genotype files of members of defendant Human's family, specifically his wife, Asa Elarap, and his daughter, Victoria Human, than from an unrelated individual. Moreover, as, as set forth herein, and in Exhibit A, Miss Ellerup and Victoria Human were out of the state at the time of these murders, which provides further support that Rex A. Hureman murdered, restrained, and transported the remains of the victims to Gilgo Beach until they were ultimately discovered in December of 2010. Male hair linked to defendant Hureman, because people say, why isn't one of his hairs on any of these victims? It was. It was. Okay, that's why we go through the document. Finally, during the initial examination of Miss Waterman's skeletal remains, and the burlap materials, the SCCL was able to recover a male hair from the bottom of the burlap used to wrap Miss Waterman by her killer. Herein after, male hair on Waterman. An initial examination, I'm just going to read and then go back to the footnote, of said hair revealed Caucasian or European characteristics. However, the hair was unsuitable for further DNA analysis at the time by the SCCL. The male hair on Waterman was subsequently submitted to Forensic Lab 1 prior to the identification of Rex Human as a suspect and more recently to Forensic Lab number 2 for further DNA analysis. So now let's just go back and read this little footnote which says, In addition to Forensic Lab 1 conducting nuclear DNA testing of the pseudo-exemplars and buckle swap samples from Victoria Human and Asa Ederup, Forensic Lab number 2 conducted mitochondrial DNA testing and was able to generate a full mitochondrial DNA profile from the aforementioned Gatorade bottle, which, as set forth herein, is directly attributable to Asa Elorup. Forensic lab number two compared Asa Elorup's mitochondrial DNA profile to the mitochondrial DNA profile developed from the female hair on Costello, which resulted in the conclusion that the mitochondrial DNA profiles are the same at all compared positions common to and between samples, specifically at a rate that would, as per the EMPOP database, exclude 99.98% of the North American population from the female hair on Costello. Since humans inherit their mitochondrial DNA solely from their mothers, a mother and her children, example Asa Elarap and Victoria Human respectively, would share the same mitochondrial DNA profile. Here, Forensic Lab number 1's nuclear DNA comparison provides clarity as to who, within Asa Elarap and Victoria Human's mitochondrial DNA profile, is the contributor of the female hair on Costello. Now remember, that was a long footnote. We've already read this little paragraph, so let's continue. They say here, A. Determinations made by Forensic Lab 1 regarding the male hair on Waterman following defendant Human's arrest. Recently, Forensic Lab number 1 was able to generate DNA sequencing data for the male hair on Waterman and subsequently conducted a one-to-one -one autosomal nuclear DNA comparison between said profiles developed from the male hair on Waterman 
to Rex Hurman's SNP genotype file developed from an extract of the napkin contained within the pizza box depicted below and described in further detail in Exhibit A, which resulted in the following conclusion. So if you've never seen this exhibit before, there it is. This guy got busted by pizza. The DNA profile generated from the male hair on Waterman is 1.408 times 10 to the power of 169 more likely to have come from a person genetically identical to Rex Hurman's SNP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. B. Determinations made by Forensic Lab No. 2 regarding the male hair on Waterman following Defendant Hurman's arrest. Subsequent analysis by Forensic Lab No. 2 has also forensically tied Defendant Rex A. Hurman to the contents of the aforementioned pizza box. Specifically, on August 1st of 2023, the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office here in SCDAO filed an order to show cause pursuant to CPL 24541E, which required Defendant Hurman to submit to the taking of an oral buckle swab. On August 9th of 2023, the Honorable Timothy P. Maze granted the SCDAO's motion. On or about August 16th of 2023, the SCDAO detective investigator secured a buckle swab from defendant Hurman at the Suffolk County Correctional Facility. The SCCL analyzed and subsequently generated a nuclear DNA profile from defendant Rex A. Hurman's buckle swab and sent extracts of said swab to forensic lab number two for mitochondrial DNA profiling and further comparison. Recently, forensic lab number two issued a report containing the following conclusions. The extract of Rex Hurman's buckle swab was designated as item number 3402K4. Forensic lab number two was able to generate a complete mitochondrial DNA profile for item 3402K4. Forensic lab number two compared said profile to the profile previously generated for item 3402K2 from abandoned pizza crust. Forensic lab number two was able to conclude the mitochondrial DNA profile of 3402K2 from the pizza crust and 3402K4 Rex Hurman buckle swab are the same. Recently, the SCCL also issued a report containing the following conclusions. A male nuclear DNA profile was developed from the buckle swab of Rex A. Hurman, which matched the nuclear DNA profiles previously developed from not only the contents of the pizza box described supra to wit the pizza crusts and napkin, but also the bottles left out for collection on July 21st of 2022, which had previously been attributable to unknown individual C. Based on the foregoing, it is significant that Forensic Lab No. 1 and Forensic Lab No. 2 have been able to determine that the male hair on Waterman, namely the male hair recovered near the bottom of the burlap, utilized to restrain and transport Megan Waterman's naked and deceased body, is substantially more likely to have derived from a person genetically identical to Rex A. Hurman's SNP genotype file than from an unrelated individual. The chart below summarizes the aforementioned results from Forensic Lab No. 1 and Forensic Lab No. 2, which have been independently able to determine that the hair is recovered on three of the four victims are forensically tied to defendant Hurman and to members of his immediate family while that family was out of state, lending further support to the conclusion that defendant Hurman is the individual who murdered, stripped, restrained, and transported the remains of each of the aforementioned victims to Gilgo Beach until the victims were ultimately discovered in December of 2010. Now we do love a table summary, <laughs> so let's make this just a little bit bigger. We want to see the whole thing. There we go with all the sides. Okay, so have a look at this. Look at this table. Okay, victim is listed in the first column, designation in bail letter, approximate location of hair recovery, mitochondrial DNA results, and nuclear SNP data results. So for Maureen Brainard Barnes, the designation in the bell letter says female hair on Barnes, where the buckle of belt restraining lower body, mitochondrial DNA results not available, and then the nuclear DNA is 7.9 trillion times more likely to come from an individual with the identical genetic profile as Asa Elera. So to summarize, there was a hair found on the buckle of the belt of one of the belts out of three belts restraining Maureen Brainard Barnes's body, and that hair belonged to Asa Elerab. Megan Waterman, there were two female hairs on Waterman outside head area, and this would be a match to Asa Elerab. 
Megan Waterman as well. They said two female hairs on Waterman tape in the area of the head also matched to Asa Elrap. Megan Waterman, male hair on Waterman portion bottom of the burlap and this was matched to Rex Hurman and Amber Costello, female hair on Costello tape in the area of the head was linked to Victoria Hurman, which I can't imagine how terrifying that must be for her. If convicted on the current charges, defendant Rex A. Human faces multiple sentences of life without parole. Remand without bail is appropriate. Based on the serious, heinous nature of these serial murders, the strength of the people's case, the life incarceration the defendant faces upon conviction, the extreme measures this defendant took to attempt to avoid apprehension for over a decade, defendant's use of fictitious names, email and cell phone burner accounts to avoid detection, online counter surveillance, and defendant's indictment on yet another murder charge as it pertains to a now fourth victim, the people remain steadfast that the only means to ensure the defendant's return to court is to remind the defendant without bail. This was signed January 16th of 2024. There is by Andrew Lee, assistant district attorney. So yes, he's in jail. He's being held on no bond and he's writing letters to the happy face killer, <laughs> Keith Jesperson. If you haven't seen that live stream or video, Check that out as well. It's on the playlist. I do also want to quickly show you this four page document, which says Supreme Court, Suffolk County, the people of the state of New York against Rex A. Human defendant. Look at all those charges that he's facing already. Oh my goodness. And I have no doubt that there's going to be more and probably he's probably murdered more people than we'll ever know of. In my opinion, of course, he's innocent until proven guilty. I'm aware of that. But in my opinion, yeah, this guy would have a lot more victims than what we'll probably ever know. So count one, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses the defendant Rex A. Human of the crime of murder in the first degree in violation of New York State Penal Law section. There's a number committed as follows. The defendant Rex A. Human being more than 18 years of age at the time of the commission of the crime on or about July 10th of 2009 with the intent to cause the death of Melissa Barthelemy, caused the death of Melissa Barthelemy, and on or about December 11th of 2010, the body of Melissa Barthelemy was found in the county of Suffolk and as part of a separate criminal transactions within a period of 24 months when committed in a similar fashion to or pursuant to a common scheme or plan, the defendant with the intent to cause the death of Megan Waterman caused the death of Megan Waterman on or about June 6th of 2010 in the state of New York. And the defendant with the intent to cause the death of Amber Costello caused the death of Amber Costello on or about September 2nd of 2010 in the state of New York. Count two, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses the defendant Rex A. Human of the crime of murder in the first degree in violation of the New York State Penal Law section committed as follows. The defendant Rex A. Human, being more than 18 years of age at the time of the commission of the crime on or about June 6th of 2010 with intent to cause the death of Megan Waterman, caused the death of Megan Waterman and on or about December 13th of 2010, the body of Megan Waterman was found in the county of Suffolk and as part of a separate criminal transactions within a period of 24 months, when committed in a similar fashion or pursuant to a common scheme or plan, the defendant with the intent to cause the death of Melissa Barthelemy, caused the death of Melissa Barthelemy on or about July 10th of 2009 in the state of New York and the defendant with the intent to cause the death of Amber Costello caused the death of Amber Costello on or about September 2nd of 2010 in the state of New York. Count three, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses the defendant Rex A. Hurman of the crime of murder in the first degree in violation of the New York State Penal Law section committed as follows. The defendant Rex A. Hurman being more than 18 years of age at the time of the commission of the crime on or about September 2nd of 2010 with the intent to cause the death of Amber Costello, caused the death of Amber Costello, and on or about December 13th of 2010, the body of Amber Costello was found in the county of Suffolk, and as part of a separate criminal transaction within the period of 24 months, when committed in a similar fashion, or pursuant to a common scheme or plan, the defendant with the intent to cause the death of Megan Waterman, caused the death of Megan Waterman on or about June 6th of 2010, in the state of New York, and the defendant with intent to cause the death of Melissa Barthelemy caused the death of Melissa Barthelemy on or about July 10th of 2009 in the state of New York. Count four, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses the defendant Rex A. Human 
of the crime of murder in the second degree in violation of New York State Penal Law Section. There's a number committed as follows. The defendant wrecks a human on or about July 10th of 2009 with the intent to cause the death of Melissa Bartholomew, caused the death of Melissa Bartholomew, and on or about December 11th of 2010, the body of Melissa Bartholomew was found in the county of Suffolk. Count 5, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses defendant Rex A. Human of the crime of murder in the second degree in violation of New York State Penal Law Section 125251 committed as follows. The defendant Rex A. Human on or about June 6th of 2010 with the intent to cause the death of Megan Waterman caused the death of Megan Waterman on or about December 13th, 2010. The body of Megan Waterman was found in the county of Suffolk. Count 6, and you can now see Count 7 was added. Uh, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses the defendant Rex A. Human of the crime of murder in the second degree in violation of the New York State Penal Law Section committed as follows. The defendant Rex A. Human on or about September 2nd of 2010 with the intent to cause the death of Amber Costello caused the death of Amber Costello and on or about December 13th of 2010 the body of Amber Costello was found in the county of Suffolk. Count 7, the grand jury of Suffolk County by this indictment accuses the defendant Rex A. Human of the crime of murder in the second degree in violation of New York State Penal Law Section committed as follows. The defendant Rex A. Hureman on or about July 9th of 2007 with the intent to cause the death of Maureen Brainard Barnes caused the death of Maureen Brainard Barnes and on or about December 13th of 2010 the body of Maureen Brainard Barnes was found in the county of Suffolk. And we can see the four-person sign, the assistant four-person sign, and district attorney Raymond A. Tierney also signed. Well, that's it for the latest documents in this case. Of course, this was a document-heavy video, because that was the intention of the video, was to go over the latest documents. If documents aren't your thing, don't you worry, because I cover lots of cases with many different formats. We love to look at presentations, we do map time, we do deep dives, we look at video clips, interrogation videos, we cover trials and all those things. So if this wasn't quite for you, don't worry, there's so much that you could watch. If you like short form content, there's lots of YouTube shorts that I'm making as well. Um, I do have a second channel called Grizzly True Crime Shorts, but I'm mostly actually posting the shorts on here now because I figured out how to do that without spamming all of you. So you can just check it out if you want to without getting all the notifications for YouTube shorts because that could get quite annoying, right? So just in case you're wondering what's happening there. But if you do want to subscribe to that second channel, why not? Why not? It's always good to have a backup, right? Okay, so thank you so much uh, for being here with me as we went through these horrifying documents. I mean, I can't even begin to imagine what Rex A. Hureman got up to when no one was looking. It sounds absolutely horrifying, just based on his Google searches, his activities, the things he said, the way the victims were bound. Oh, no, 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 no. It's terrible. So sending lots of love to all of the victims, family and friends. I mean, this is so heartbreaking and devastating. I mean, many of them had children, families that were looking for them for a long time before their bodies were found. And then to think it took more than a decade to even learn about a suspect because it was this elusive, you know, Long Island serial killer. No one knew who he was. Now at least there is a name and a face and the suspect is Rex A. Hureman. So I will be keeping a close eye on this case as I do with, you know, all the ones that we are following I don't think that this trial will be televised because it's in New York and in New York they don't have cameras in the courtrooms. But of course, if there's going to be, if they decide otherwise, we will definitely be covering it. Other than that, of course, we're following every development very closely and I will then see you in the next one. There's many updates this week at the time of recording. Today is Wednesday, January 17th of 2024, which if you're watching this today, on that day, Tomorrow is a huge day in the Delphi case. So I hope you'll join me for that live stream. Make sure you check out my video section and my live stream section and the short section and community to everywhere because there's updates for you all over the place, okay? <laughs> so I will see you again very soon. Stay safe. Leave your comments below. I look forward to reading them. Just please try to keep them kind, okay? A lot of people get very, very uh, angry in this case and they definitely want to blame Asa for a lot. But just... Just try to hold your horses and be kind. Give people the benefit of the doubt because they're not charged with anything. So we'll have to see. Okay. And I will see you in the next one. Okay. Bye.